And to dig more about the latest Thai political situation after the cent general election, we are now connected with Dr. Michael J. Montesano, an associate senior fellow of the Thailand Studies Program at ICS Yusof Ishak Institute, Singapore. Yes, uh, Dr. Montesano, good afternoon. Thank you so much for um, joining us. Now, we have uh, heard many opinions saying that this year's elections would become um, sort of a battle between the young striving for change and also the old conservatives wishing to linger in power. How should the public in Southeast Asia understand of the current Thai political situation? Well, I think the public should understand that Thai voters saw very little appeal from the parties that represented the outgoing government. Both the Palan Pracharat party, which was the largest uh, party in the outgoing government coalition, and the United Thai Nation party, which uh, had forwarded the current prime minister, Brayut Chan Ocha, as its candidate for prime minister this time around, did very, very poorly in the polls. And I think this really illustrates the fact that the outgoing government uh, was seen as stale, it, or, it offered very little that was fresh in the eyes of the voters, and that the authoritarianism that it represented um, really has very little appeal to voters. Voters seem to think that Thailand needs to go in a different direction and that the need for an authoritarian regime to clamp down on forces with which more, which with many voters in the past have been uncomfortable is no longer necessary. Is this why also uh, they are now uh, voted on uh, Pita Lim Jarunrat? Because we knew that from his background, um, he, he used to be the CEO of a Grab Company and also uh, at least from, from an entrepreneur and also businessman uh, background, not political. So it, it seems like it's a big leap of change for, for Thailand at the moment. But is it, uh, is it what the Thai people need at the moment? Well, what needs has been very difficult. Um, Thailand is lagging in many, many areas, not least the area of human capital, not least the area of innovation, least the area of relatively slow economic growth and low productivity. Um, and then, of course, there are the issues with the strong role of the Thai military in the political so the mm -hmm. prominence of the monarchy in the nation's affairs. These are all very, very large issues. It's certainly clear that Thailand could use a break with the past way of doing things. And the Future Forward Party very definitely represents that. Uh, Mr. Pita, yes, is a former businessman, but I think we also have to understand that he's an excellent campaigner and that his party ran a superb, energetic, creative campaign and he really deserves credit for uh leading his party to victory that he did mm -hmm. there was to be sure uh the expectation that a generational divide would characterize these elections without saying that many people who supported uh the future forward party were excuse me the move forward party were younger voters but it really seems that the support for that party uh, extends beyond youth and educated youth. There's been talk the educated youth actually influence their parents to uh, support the Move Forward Party. Right. Uh, doctor, we understand that the opposition parties have promised um, cash handouts yeah, yeah. to the population and also doubling the minimum wage. So there's this high expectation uh, on the Thai population right now that things are changing in the country. However, does all of the Thai population want that change? Do, are they pr all pro-democracy or are there some people who still willing to be in status quo? Exactly. Yeah. Well, for sure, there's still elements in Thailand that take a very conservative view of things. And and those elements have, have, have many components. One uh, is people who are nervous about challenges to the place of the monarchy in Thai affairs. Another uh, would be the military, which has for a long time had a very prominent place in, in Thai affairs and would be quite alarmed by the prospect of uh, losing its clout 
its historic clout in Thai affairs. We also have to understand that even though Pita is a former businessman, his party has staked out an extremely strong line against the leading firms and their dominance of certain sectors in the Thai economy. One of the planks in the platform of the Move Forward Party is demonopolization. Monopolization. Mm -hmm. In other words, very large firms should be nervous, not so much about the handouts, but about the determination of the Move Forward Party to make the Thai economy much more competitive. Thailand has a tremendous competition problem, and the Move Forward Party, like its predecessor, the Future Forward Party, understands that that needs to be addressed directly. Well, um, for us here um, in the uh, outside of Thailand, we saw that Pita Lim Jarunraj just emerged from nowhere to be um, winning this election because we've been hearing about uh, Paitong Tar Sinawat uh, being um, like the uh, the front runner for for the uh, Thai election. But is the victory of Move Forward Party surprising in your point of view? The scope of their victory was very surprising. And where we see what surprises most is really in the party list vote. Mm -hmm. The party list vote for Move Forward was more than 3 million votes higher than the party list vote for the Pua Thai Party. And this is a, a, a very precise metric of this, the, the extent of the Move Forward Party's appeal to voters across the country. Mm -hmm. Because remember, the total of votes in the party list votes comes from voters, not just in constituencies that Move Forward will have won, but from voters across all the provinces of Thailand. But it's it really was not clear that uh, the Pua Thai party was appealing effectively uh, to new Thai voters. Certainly, former Prime Minister Thaksin's uh, inclusion of his daughter among the party's candidates for mm -hmm. prime minister was a naked attempt to try to appeal to more useful voters. But it was also a very mechanical attempt, that is, run a younger person and assume that younger voters might be interested. And that mechanical attempt clearly did not work as well as the program that the Move Forward Party was able to advance and the appeal of that program to young voters and others. All right, uh, Doctor, we know that MFP is obviously hoping to get support from other parties yeah. in a coalition because they need about 376 seats in both houses, right, of Thailand's parliament to be able to elect a prime minister and form a government. But um, Right now, if I'm not mistaken, they have only secured about 313 seats, which means they need to approach the, For the 250 military-appointed non-elected senators voting in their favor. What's your forecast on this? Is that a possibility that some of the senators would vote in favor of that coalition? There are already clear indications from a number of senators that they will, in fact, vote to support the coalition. It's not yet enough, but the the strategy that the uh, Move Forward Party and its coalition partners have adopted is, first of all, to announce tomorrow the MOU that will represent the consensus of the eight <coughs> parties in that 313-seat coalition in terms of what they want to do in government. And the idea is that they intend, as it were, to shame a certain number of mem members of the Senate into voting in alignment with the expressed will of the Thai people. There's tremendous frustration in Thailand that such an undemocratic body as the wholly appointed Senate will play such a role in the determination of who gets to govern the country in the future. And the hope is that that frustration leads to some soul searching on the part of members of the Senate and that these members of the Senate are, as it were, again, shamed into voting with the people rather than voting in a more conservative manner. Now, apparently for us who are not familiar with 
uh, Thai political system, also a mechanism. Uh, we want to know what are actually the requirements for the democratically elected government in Thailand uh, in order to complete its term? Well, Thailand has a parliamentary system, which means that it is possible for a government to lose a vote of no confidence during its normal four-year term and to leave office. Mm. Uh, but as a general matter, uh, Thai parliaments last four years and that a government or a coalition that can retain uh, the support of the parliament can remain in power for that period. We must also remember that the, under the terms of Thailand's uh, 2017 constitution, the Senate's role in electing a prime minister will come to an end quite soon. And we can expect that if there are new elections uh, later in the life of the coming parliament, mm -hmm. uh, the Senate will no longer play that role. Um, some experts have been saying that the easiest path for MFP to reach the number 376 seats mm -hmm. would be to invite Boom Jai Thai into that coalition. Yeah. However, because we know that it's the third largest party, they won uh, 70 seats on the elections, right? But the two party seems like they're not ready for it yet. The Boom Jai Thai party even has stated that it will I don't know, they, they're not sure if they want to support that. They're still in the crossroads. That's right, so could you confirm about this? Uh, what is your take on this? Well, um, this is a very interesting question. The the nominal leader of the Pum Jai Thai party, Mr. Anutin, has said in the past that because uh, the Move Forward party is interested in reforming the role of the monarchy in the Thai political system, uh, his party will be unwilling to support a coalition led by Move Forward. Um, this raises several interesting points. One point is what the MOU among the eight coalition parties to be unveiled tomorrow will say about reform of the monarchy. There's a possibility that it will play down the issue of reform of the monarchy and if that's true, well, perhaps that will open the door to Pum Jai Thai support. The other thing we need to understand is that Pum Jai Thai is in many ways an old fashioned Thai political party. Mm -hmm. It operates in an extremely opportunistic way. And <laughs> on the one hand, Move Forward is not terribly interested in having opportunists in its coalition. On the other hand, opportunists sometimes are willing to make deals. And potentially there are deals that could induce the Pum Jai Thai party to come along. But as of now, that's not really the strategy that the Move Forward Party-led coalition has adopted. The strategy that it's adopted, as I say, is to try to induce somehow, perhaps through shame, enough senators to support its entry into government mm -hmm. that they don't need Om Jai Thai. Mm. All right, probably this is the last question for me, doctor. Uh, if there is any stalemate, um, is there any role that will be played by the monarch uh, of Thailand at the moment? Or is there any, any significant role that can be, uh, that can be uh, uh, imposed by uh, the king at the moment? Well, yes. Um, in previous episodes of stalemate in Thai politics, there have been uh, direct appeals for royal intervention. Uh, the late King Pumipon was uh, hesitant to uh, intervene so directly, and he understood that uh, such intervention could really uh, tarnish the position of the monarchy as appearing to be above politics. On another level, however, um, it is certainly possible that people associated with the palace could resort to jawboning 
and consulting behind the scenes mm -hmm. in real secrecy with political actors to resolve a stalemate. Um, whether the palace under the current high king uh, could do that effectively is an open question because uh, he's a relatively new sovereign and we really haven't seen him and his advisors uh, do that in the past. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a very interesting um, dynamic to to uh, to see in, in Thai uh, election also in political system. But uh, we hope that this election could actually bring changes to uh, Thailand as the Thai people uh, hope so. So uh, Dr. Michael J. Montesano, an associate of senior fellow of the Thailand Studies Program at ICS Yushov Isak Institute Singapore. Doctor, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us and also all the knowledge being shared. Uh, please do take care. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. So that was what an interesting very discussion. interesting. I love this this kind of discussion because uh, all these times we only seen uh, we've only seen that the Thai uh, political system has been very uh, I'm not going to say secluded, but mm -hmm. it's very um, uh, secretive when it comes to uh, how they would run uh, the, the, the political party and stuff like that. And we saw that uh, some recurring coup, not only uh, the last one, but also the previous one. So this is actually one of the questions that need to be answered by the uh, uh, Thai politicians uh, in terms of uh, the election. We are hoping that lots of changes would be uh, would be uh, brought by Pita Lim Jarunrat. I think a new history True. is being made True. right now. All right, we're going to take a little break right now. And after the break, I did deliver some economics and business updates, so don't go anywhere.